Hi there, welcome back to this series of record reviews with me, JVT, coming to you from a warm New York City, summer in the city. Uh, episode 11, or episode 10, part B, whatever you want to call it, um, the 1980s. Now, last time we spoke to you about uh, records that from the 80s uh, from outside Australia. Now, this, this week is uh, the Australian special, the 1980s. Um, a lot of records to get through because um, growing up in the 80s in Australia, uh, heavily influenced by local rock, uh, the pub rock scene was in its, at its height back then. I wasn't involved, I was buying the records. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get through a few of them and um, maybe put you onto some great Aussie rock. First cab off the rank, this to start the 80s, back in black, ACDC. We love them, we're proud of them. The world embraced them and they're still going strong. Uh, bon, bon passed on in the late 70s and uh, Brian Johnson who we still think is the new guy, uh, came in and it was, wasn't as if they, they, they'd never missed a beat. Um, this is an all-time classic, Back in Black, ACDC. Still sounds awesome today. You know, it's 35 years old, but rock on, man. The Barking Spiders Live. Cold Chisel, in other words. Cold Chisel, a great Australian band, one of the greatest Australian bands. Um, God knows why they didn't break into America, but they have a, the, the song, the main song of Don Walker is uh, very Australiana uh, orientated in his writing. Um, just clever, clever lyrics, beautiful music, rockin' music, guitar work by Ian Moss, the vocals of Jim Barnes, and they just put a new record out this year, so they're still rocking. Cold Chisel, The Barking Spiders Live. Now that was a that was a live concert they did near the end of the first time they actually they called it a day for a long time. So 1983, they were about to pull the pin. So this is a live album around that period. 1982 bought Circus Animals. Um, rock, great rock from start to finish. Forever Now is an all-time classic. Um, when the War Is Over. I, I think a song called Taipan on this record is uh, probably the best song of the album. You Got Nothing I Want. Beautiful uh, record cover too. Photo taken out in the salt lakes out in uh, South Australia by the looks of things. Um, Cold Chisel Circus Animals. Swing Shift, a double live album of Cold Chisel. Um, just captures them at their rockin'est, rawest. Great album, great live album, Swing Shift. Live albums that aren't usually fantastic, but this kicks butt, this is really good. So the demise, well, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Cold Chisel first split, I suppose you call it. Um, the singer Jim Barnes went on to uh, bigger and better things as a solo artist. He started with an album called Swing Shift, which is unbelievable record, great record. Um, for the working class man's probably his, probably his most popular, I suppose. Working class man's a Australian anthem now. Um, Jim Barnes for the working class man. Rock on. Now, you've probably heard me talk about, about a band called Jojo Z and the Falcons in the past. Uh, the lead singer and main songwriter, Joe Camilleri, went on to form a band called The Black Sorrows. This is from 1988, Hold On To Me. Um, that band went on and was one of the most popular bands in the country, in Australia, for a good 10 plus years. Um, very different from the soul, blues, bass rock of The Falcons. Um, sophisticated stuff. Um, but very popular pop rock music by the Black Sorrows. Hold On To Me, probably their best album I suppose. That and Dear Children. Now, just 
think about beer, sticky carpets in a pub in the 1980s, and this band were probably playing on the stage that you were, where you were standing. The Radiators. I think I've reviewed one of their, their first album, Feel the Heat. Scream of the Real, um, Nasty Habits and Nice Children in the later 80s. The Rads, um, still playing today. One of the hardest working bands in Australia. The Radiators. They should have been big in America too. Now, from the stable of Vander, Vander and Young, Harry Vander and George Young, the Easy Beats guys, George being Angus and Malcolm Young from ACDC's elder brother. Um, one of their earlier 80s productions was a band called the Choir Boys. Um, classic sound, Vander and Young sound, Oz rock sound, guitars, heavy drums, good bass. Uh, Mark Gable, great Aussie rock voice, um, still playing live today. Um, this is their debut album, The Choir Boys. Get yourself a copy of that. Uh, Never Gonna Die, I think, was the single off that. The Choir Boys. Now, the great, one of the greatest bands of all time, The Angels, or in America they called them Angel City. I think I've reviewed this album before, Dark Room. No Secrets, classic song off that. Um, Dark Room. Um, 1982, I think, Night Attack. They changed drummers. Brent Eccles, a Kiwi guy, came and played drums with them and played drums for the next 20 years with them, actually. Um, Night Attack. Great, al really good album. One of, I reckon, one of the last great Angels albums. Um, and I reckon that'd be kick-ass on a T-shirt, that front cover, too. So if anyone out there's a T-shirt maker, go and do that, will you? The Angels Night Attack. Now this is a band, my mate Booney and I saw this band support Midnight Oil um, in about 1981 or 2 at the South Melbourne Cricket Ground near the Lake Oval there. Um, Sydney's Spy vs Spy, political, um, raw, raw sound, um, Craig Bloxham on vocal. Um, very unique sounding singer. Um, they they are around in a form of some sort. Craig doesn't sing uh, in their band anymore, but um, uh, this Meters Inside was from 1980, 1983. Um, great band, Spy vs. Spy. Harry's Reasons. This, this went on to sell a fair few copies. This one, this was a great album, Harry's Reasons. Um, another great album by the Spice, um, political rock, sort of a junior midnight all in a funny way. Yeah. They were on that Powderworks um, label with the oils. Harry's Reasons, Spy vs. Spy. Now, this is a single by the legendary Melbourne pub band Painters and Dockers. Um, it's a great story to do with the Dockers, me, Booney and Shane Jenkins, all schoolboy lads in Melbourne, but we won't go into that. That'll, that's for another podcast on its own, I think. Um, this is Kill, Kill, Kill. If you're any Get Smart fans out there, this is a version of the, the Groovy Gurus Kill, Kill, Kill by Painters and Dockers. Still rocking, docking on after all these years, Paul Stewart and the gang. This is their album of the time, Love Planet. 1984, I think. 1984, I think. Love Planet. Um, a Melbourne pub rock classic. Love Planet by the Painters and Dockers. Great band. Now, out of the 70s art scene in uh, Sydney came a great band called Metal As Anything. I think I've spoken to you about before. Um, Still play around today in, in, well, in Martin Plaza and Greedy Smith, who are the mainstays of that band. Uh, Reggie Mombasa and Peter O'Doherty uh, left a few years. They have a great band called Dog Trumpet these days. But uh, the Mentals still play around, um, put records out still. Um, and yeah, for years they had hit after hit after hit. You go to a Mental as Anything show and everyone just knows all the words to all the songs. So. Cats and Dogs, a great album. Espresso Bongo, with that great old 
Italian style photo on the front cover, brilliant. These are all, these guys, remember these guys are art students, so they're very creative guys. Reg Mombasa did a lot of artwork for um, Mambo, the um, I suppose streetwear, surfwear company for many years. Um, Creatures of Leisure. With the Bulmar and the Valiant, you can't get much more Australian than that. Look at that on the veranda, brilliant. Ah, uh, the models, we've spoken about the models, this is the best, one of the best uh, bands from the late 70s, early 80s. Um, like I said, I think they, they're at their peak for me when they're an electronic uh, experimental type band with this Cut Lunch EP. Um, but they, um, they put this album out called The Pleasure of Company and it probably bought them more wider acclaim with a guy called James Foyd who was a great pop uh, songwriter, singer who joined the band. Um, I Hear Motion was probably the biggest hit off that. Um, the Pleasure of Company, love it. Good gatefold, gatefold records, man. Unbelievable. The Bottles. Great pub rock band from Australia, Mio 245, Other Places was a great uh, hit for them. Uh, Screen Memory, Mio 245. Probably came and went as quick as the uh, the song came and went too. Whatever that means. Um, great New Zealand band, Dragon. Um, had huge hits in the late 70s um, and then went away for a while and then in about 983 or 4, The Body and the Beat was released. They made a comeback of sorts and this was a huge album for them. Um, Raining was a, a massive hit in Australia and New Zealand at the time the Hunter brothers were back in business but unfortunately um, in the 90s, I think it was the 90s early 2000s Mark Hunter the lead singer died um, that was that's pretty sad because he was a really unique singer and I think one of the classic singers of Australian and New Zealand rock. Body in the Beat, Dragon. Oh, another Mentals album, Get Wet. Um, now this is uh, this is a US version put out on uh, Virgin Records. Um, so they have, they were quite popular, the Mentals, in, uh, in Europe and uh, England. They had, a, they had a, a, a good run of success over there. Um, yeah, and colleges and that sort of thing. Um, Little Heroes, one of the great bands out of Melbourne, Roger Hart, uh, great singer-songwriter. Play by Numbers. This is probably the my favourite album of theirs called Watch the World, about 1984. Um, some great songs came out of that. Um, they had a, a great a great song of this called One Perfect Day, which I reckon is an Australian classic. Um, you'll hear it played today, and people people will sing along with that. It's a great song. Um, what can I say about Richard Clapton? Richard Clapton is a legend of Australian music. Um, Richard Clapton is one of the best singer-songwriters ever, ever come out of Australia. And this is probably, uh, for me, he did a great lot of albums in the late 70s, but in the 1980s, this was a killer album, The Great Escape by Richard Clapton. I Am An Island is a great song, one of my favourite songs. Um, best Years of Our Lives, um, The Universal, The Universal is a great song too. Um, the Great Escape, Richard Clapton. Go and get a copy of that. Really good stuff. Um, now, for me, this band was always a, you know, a good, good rockin' Australian band with cool guys in it. Um, and then all of a sudden, in the late 80s, they just exploded and became one of the biggest bands of the world, um, In Excess. This is their first album. This, this album, my brother and my brother used to borrow it from his mates. I think I've talked about this with other records before. He used to borrow it from his mates and I used to borrow it from him and listen to it. Um, it's got a really cool cover. I think these guys were art students as well. Uh, Mike Hutchins and uh, Andrew Farris, one of the great songwriting duos to come out of Australia. Um, In Excess, this is their first album, In Excess. Um, now this one, this one was about 1984, The Swing, it had a lot of hits and it, it sort of broke them into Europe um, and England. Um, Original Sin was 
one of the great original sin and I sent a message with the two big sellers off that record that's a, that's um that's in excess with uh, a bigger budget and uh, better production values but it's a great album it's a really good album um, and this one this one's probably this if I have the list probably my top 10 records of all time of any any records this would be in it for sure. Um, this is one of those records that I'll listen to from start to finish. And all the songs are fantastic. Um, Shabu Shabar by NXS. Um, yeah, one of the great albums. Shabu Shabar. Dave Mason and The Reels. Um, out of the late 70s into the 80s. They've written some classics. Quasimodo's Dream comes is probably you, a, lot, long, a lot of the time listed as... Um, a uh, classic Australian uh, pop song, popular song. Um, Dave Mason from Dubbo and The Reels. Five great gift ideas from The Reels. New Zealand's Queen of Pop, Sharon O'Neill. I mean, not only was she great looking, but um, she wrote some great songs too. It had really good musicians play with her. Um, Foreign Affairs is always been a favourite of mine and my brothers. Um, Maxine is a fantastic song. Um, uh, Sharon O'Neill, great singer songwriter from New Zealand. Well, we'll get, we get, we're in a, we're a bit of a New Zealand section here. Um, Dave, great guy called uh, Dave Dobbin from New Zealand. Um, had a band called Didi Smash. This is, for me, it's his best album, The Optimist. Um, Wailing, uh, Magic What She Do, She Loves Me Back, whatever. Um, but he went on and wrote a song called Slice of Heaven, which was used in a, a movie of some sort. And um, he got the success he deserved after a while. Dave Dobbin, he's still around today, and I think he's pretty much um, uh, recognised as one of New Zealand's best songwriters. Uh, DD Smash, The Optimist. Uh, in New Zealand, um, this is a band out of New Zealand, but probably I think spent most of their time in Australia. Um, My Sex, I think I've talked about My Sex before. These are a couple of albums that came out of the 80s. Um, Shanghai, which is 1981. Um, and Where Do They Go, which was probably their last record, I think, with their last studio album. Um, Steve Gilpin, their lead singer, unfortunately passed away in a car accident in the 90s so that, uh, one of my favourite bands one of my brothers and my favourite bands My Sex go, out your, go and get yourself some My Sex one of the great album covers I reckon of all time Hoodoo Gurus, Stone Age Romeos one of their early albums um, and they, they've gone on to be one of Australia's most popular bands for the last 30 years Hoodoo Gurus, Stone Age Romeos Men at work, business as usual, down under, worldwide hit. Colin Hay still touring as we speak. Um, this is a US pressing, I think, um, with a yellow cover. It usually comes in white. Business as usual, men at work. Um, great band out of Sydney, uh, the Sunny Boys. Um, Probably, I, I think we probably saw most of them on Donny Sutherland's Sounds um, back in the 80s. Um, probably didn't get the recognition they deserve. Great raw surfing, surf type uh, rock and roll music um, out of Sydney, the Sunny Boys. Flowers, Ice House, Ice House Flowers. They came out as a band called The Flowers. Had a band called, had an album called Ice House ended up being a band called Ice House and one of the most popular bands of the 80s Ivor Davies and Ice House Flowers Monday Rock Chemistry Ross Wilson Godfather of Australian Rock and Roll Daddy Cool Monday Rock um, still playing today um, The Chemistry we talked about this before it's just one of the great albums from start to finish out of Melbourne Mondo Rock, Chemistry. Now the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, um, it, uh, it produced one of the greatest uh, Australian bands from the late 70s and 
to mid 80s called Australian Crawl. Um, this album called Sirocco is probably one of their greatest. Th that and their first album, Boys Light Up, um, are their two best records, I think. Uh, Sirocco, strong from start to finish, with the unique vocals of James Rain, who later go on to uh, extreme, extremely uh, high success as a solo artist. He's over the back there. He's, his first album, James Rain, is a is a great album, so go out and get that one. He's still playing around uh, the traps as we speak. Another one called Semantics. This was probably towards the end of uh, Australian Crawl's career, mid to late 80s, Semantics. Um, now, one of, the, one of the most successful bands to come out of New Zealand, uh, Split Ends. In 1980, they had this album called 80. Yeah, 980, True Colours. Um, and I think they had about three number one hits in Australia and New Zealand with this. And I, I think they had fairly good success in Europe and England as well. Um, Split Ends, True Colours. And it came out in about three or four different album covers. So that was pretty cool. Um, Tim Finn, their band leader. Uh, legendary singer-songwriter, uh, Escapade, great solo album of his from the mid-80s, Made My Day, Staring at the Embers, Fraction Too Much Friction, that was a big hit for him, Tim Finn Escapade. 1981 over the top, We, as kids we buy the compilation records and the compilation records are still popular today so um, 1981 over the top, Metal is anything, Jonah Louie, crikey. Bit of Rick Springfield, there you go. The Runners, Surefire Thing. Uh, what else did we get? Oh, yes. Um, what's that song called? Hook, Line and Sinker, of course. It's the last song on side two, and it's probably their best song. Um, pub Rock Champions, The Runners from Melbourne. Um, Avion, I've talked about this before, this is an obscure band from um, Sydney of the late 80s called Avion, um, a guy called Randall Waller, this guy here, he went on to big fame playing and writing songs with, um, in Nashville I think, with Shania Twain and all sorts of uh, Nashville rockers, whatever you want to call them, Avion. Gary Young and the Rocking Emus, Gary Young was the um, he went to school, primary school with my uncle Noel at Chatham Primary School in Melbourne. But uh, he was a drummer in um, uh, Daddy Cool with Ross Wilson um, and Joe Joseph and the Falcons with Joe Camilleri. Um, this is a solo album of Gary's um, rockabilly stuff. Really, if you're into rockabilly, this is a great album. Um, and basically he's got the rhythm section from Daddy Cool and a guy called Jeff Burston from uh, Judges and the Falcons and Jeff also played in uh, The Black Sorrows with Joe Cam Leary as well. Great album, Gary Young and the Rocking Emus. Now, my favourite band from the 1980s, my, my musical tastes revolved around probably mostly about three or four bands and this was the biggest band, um, Midnight Oil. Um, probably one of Australia's greatest bands. Political, um, clever rock and roll. Um, Bird Noise, this is an EP they recorded up in uh, Byron Bay. Um, you know, this is a real surfy, surf type uh, influence that the Oils had in their early incarnation. Bird Noises. And then this, uh, this album came out in 81 called Place Without a Postcard. Um, don't Want to Be the One, Written in the Heart, Armistice Day. Armistice Day is a classic uh, Australian song. Um, Place Without a Postcard by Midnight Oil. I bought this one with a Brashers voucher and in Frankston in about, nine, well, as it when it came out, I think. Place Without a Postcard with the Dymo label. So you used to take these to parties in the 80s, so you'd have your, your name Dymo label on the cover. That, this one came, this was uh, Armistice Day, a live version of Armistice Day and Stand In Line, a song from um, Head Injury, the Head Injuries album from 79. Uh, came with a t-shirt, I remember. 
I mean, my, Bo my mate Booney used to wear, wear his t-shirt. I think it fell off him about 15 years ago. So he, he lasted a while with his. Um, Armistice Day, Midnight Oil. With Dymo label. And this is when they really hit their straps. 10 to 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. Extremely political, but they went to uh, London with a guy called Nick Lorne and recorded this one. Um, and uh, really started to hit their straps in Australia and England and Europe as well. 10 to 1 by Midnight Oil. Red Sails in the Sunset, another number one record for the Oils. They started to get a bit more recognised in America as well with this one. Great cover too by a Japanese guy. This They actually went to Japan and recorded this one, but the band members don't look back fondly on recording this album, but I think it's a great record. And then this one, this one, they went out in the outback um, and brought back awareness, I suppose, of the plight of Indigenous Australians um, and a, a beautiful record called Diesel and Dust. And um, even more recognition in America um, and Europe. Diesel and Dust, Midnight Oil, look at that fantastic photography on the front cover. So there you go, Australian rock and roll, an important part of my growing up and still an important part of my life and many of my friends and my brother Dave. Um, so much stuff to go through and there's probably thousands I've missed. The Church, The Blurred Crusade, which is on my t-shirt. The Church, a fantastic album, uh, band, put great albums out through the 80s. Um, Jojo's Urban, The Falcons. Uh, the Sports still put albums out. Sondra, which is a great album. Um, yeah, so hopefully I've enlightened you a bit and given you a bit of uh, info on Australian rock from the 80s. Um, so we're off for a few weeks now. We're off on a bit of a road trip in the northeast of um, uh, the US here. Um, might check out a few record stores on the way. And I'll be back in a few more weeks. See ya, bye.